Hello everyone, Mike Aben here with episode 3 of my Beginner's Guide to Kerbal Space Program. In the previous episode, we looked at how to build a very basic rocket. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at how to fly a rocket. We're going to be taking a look at the instrumentation that is available to you in the heads-up display in the game, paying particular attention to the nav ball, the very important instrument down there towards the bottom. We're also going to take a look at the controls. These are controls for both the throttle of the rocket and controls for the attitude of the rocket which includes your pitch, yaw, and your roll. We're going to take a look at the stability assist system that is built into the game and exactly what that does. And in all of that, we're going to get ourselves into space. Yes, we're going to build a rocket that is capable of reaching space, but we're going to learn that getting to space and staying in space are two entirely different things. I want to get started just with a very quick look into research and development only to show you that I have used the science that we earned over the last couple of episodes to expand on the tech tree. Still much to go, but I've got some new parts, some of which are going to be featured in this vessel. But I don't want to be spending this episode talking about building. That was last episode. I want to spend this time talking about flying. And you may have noticed that actually Valentina is already sitting on the pad waiting for us. So why don't we just jump right in? All right, so here we have Valentina. She is sitting inside the Mark I cockpit, once again, sitting on top of our little rocket. And although this thing does not look like much, it is actually fully capable of getting itself into space. A couple of things to note here is I have not, I've taken off all of the science. We're not gonna do any science in this particular one. The reason for that is I just wanna talk about flight controls. I don't want to get distracted with science. The other thing that makes this different from our first rocket from last episode is down here at the bottom instead of a solid rocket booster what I have here is the LV-1045 swivel liquid fuel engine so rather than running on solid fuel engine this one runs on liquid fuel stored in these tanks and of course it's not just liquid fuel but also oxidizer to burn said liquid fuel I have also tweaked down my thrust just like I did last episode to control my thrust to weight ratio all right, so like I said, I want to talk about, actually I'm going to start talking about the instrumentation you have available. There's a quite a bit around the screen here. Uh, towards the bottom left here, we have some instrumentation. Up to where towards the top, we have some instrumentation. And down here towards the bottom, we have the absolutely important and vital navigation ball. In fact, an experienced KSP player will spend as much, if not maybe even more time staring at this navigation ball than they will at anything else that is here on the screen. But you know, let's get ourselves started. I'm gonna start by toggling on the SAS. This is a stability assistance system. And what it does is it gets the vessel to just simply continue to point in the, or at least do its best to continue to point in the direction it's currently pointing. Right now that direction is up. I would like to continue to point upwards. This is going to help me do that. Notice that this brought up a bunch of other controls. We're gonna talk about these once we are in space. Um, I think it'll be easier to talk about them then. Also, we have here a throttle on the left side of our nav ball. So I'm going to turn up that throttle all the way to full uh, before we launch this rocket. Last episode we didn't have to worry about that. SRBs don't have throttle control. This time we do though, I, so I need to have that throttle on full. Otherwise, this thing's pretty much ready to go, so I'm just going to stage and be off. And there we go, we are off going in a upwards direction. Let's start talking about instrumentation. So over here at the top, let's start with that. This is our altimeter. It is telling us how high we are off the ground in meters. Actually, not really off the ground. The little waves is are telling us that this is how high we are above sea level. The sea, of course, being over in that direction over there. If I would like my actual altitude above the ground, I'm going to toggle this to be a little green mountain and now it's telling us how far I am above the terrain that is below us. Now 
this terrain is not much different in altitude than the sea level so when you click it it doesn't change too much it changes a little bit if you watch very very carefully but not too much now I'm feeling I'm going a little bit too quickly so I'm gonna turn down my throttle over here on the right is t is a g-force gauge telling you how many G's you want to be you can see there's a green zone there's a red zone Kerbals are pretty tough so is your equipment you can get a little bit above the green zone but once you start pushing in about this this is five G's here once you start getting in that range yeah, you might want to turn your thrust down just a little bit okay getting back up to here with Jiminer, to the right is uh, our vertical speed indicator we are now at about a thousand meters per second going up and climbing because we are still accelerating and over to the right of that are some buttons to toggle some things like for instance this just toggles our lights mine will leave our lights on this toggles landing gear which we do not have and this toggles brakes which we also do not have and we have just run out of fuel but of course we have built up quite a lot of momentum we are still on our way up uh, below our altimeter here is our atmospheric pressure thing. Sea level is right down here at the bottom, and as you go up, of course, pressure declines, and right now it's pinned at the end because we have just gone into space. Space is at 70 kilometers, so we are now in space. And Valentina is looking very, very pleased with herself. Now you might be going, oh, this, this is awesome. We're in space. We can stay up here for as long as we want. Well... Life ain't quite that simple. A lot of movies, I would say even most movies that involve space and television programs, seem to create this impression that once you get into space, once you're above the atmosphere, magically, somehow, gravity just disappears. Well, I can assure you, gravity has not disappeared. That does not happen. Gravity is very much still affecting this ship. It is just like taking a ball and throwing it up into the air, and perhaps you can throw it very, very hard and get that ball to go very, very high, but eventually, well, gravity is going to win, and it's going to bring that ball back down. You can't beat gravity. you got to learn to work with gravity, and I can show you that we are going to be on our way back down pretty soon by going over here to the bottom left and we're going to toggle this to map view and in map view it shows us our trajectory this is our trajectory here in blue we are on our way up we're going to get up to a maximum altitude of about 165,000 or 160 yeah 165,000 meters I can say that but then we are definitely on our way back down we're going to splash down here in the ocean so you might be wondering wait 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 wow I know things go into space and they stay in space for long, long periods of time. The International Space Station has been up there for decades now. How does that pull itself off? Well, I'll give you a hint. It is all about speed. We just didn't have enough. And getting that speed in the right direction. And that's going to be the topic for the next episode. Because right now I want to continue to talk about flight control. So let's get off of our map view here. Uh, actually, while we're down here in the, in the le left here, we do have, you can see here, roll, yaw, and pitch. Uh, roll, yaw, and pitch is indicating there's yaw. Yaw is moving left to right. You can see the indicators doing that. Pitch is moving up and down. Like that and roll is moving around the central axis of the vehicle like that and you can see that there are sliders here showing what you are doing getting to our nav ball that's what we really really want to talk about we are still going up we're still pretty good we will we'll be going down though pretty soon um the nav ball you can see is actually divided into two hemispheres there is a blue hemisphere which you can see now beginning to appear there is a brown hemisphere the blue hemisphere indicates the upward direction so when you put it right at the top of the blue you are pointing straight up from the planet if we adjust ourselves so that we see nothing but brown we are pointing straight down towards the planet okay so brown represents the ground blue represents the sky we also have a heading this is a compass bearing uh, zero degrees is north so let's go find the north line this is north and north is a, actually a line that goes all the way along here it's not just a single direction so like this for instance is north but to make things a little bit clear, let's go with north and put it right down on the horizon. That's the line between the sky and the ground. So now we are pointing due north, but we are parallel to the ground. Oh, we are falling. I best go quicker. <laughs> we are on limited time. You see why I didn't do science. 
as we start let's actually roll this a little bit so that blue is up if you roll the nav ball so that blue is up then motions on the screen will match motions on the map ball and that makes things a little bit easier now when i go this way makes sense on the nav ball and makes sense on the screen as well but as i go this way now we get to 90 degrees notice also it's keeping track of the heading here but 90 degrees is due east keep going around 180 degrees is due south 270 degrees is towards the west and finally we're returning back to north now as i was spinning around you're probably noticing a number of different icons here i think a number of these are actually for more advanced <laughs> i don't want to get into them too much but i do want to talk about two of them one is the uh yellow icon and the other one here this yellow with a X in the middle of it and then there's a yellow one here with a uh, no X in the middle of it these are your pro grades and retrograde icons they represent your current direction of motion so for instance now we are falling so our direction of motion is down that way so if you want to point straight in the direction you're going you put it on what's called the pro grade vector that's the one that's the open circle without the X the one that's the circle with the X in it is called the retrograde vector now the buttons here on the side notice how those labels come up prograde and retrograde they're there you can just click on and then the ship will just orient itself to any one of those so now we are pointing directly away well almost actually there's one last thing I want to show you this is up here at the top um, notice it says the word orbit this speed and these directions are relative to the uh, orbit uh, the center of the planet if I want to be relative to the surface because the surface is moving I can click on this and it says surface and notice the speed changes and not by much because we were pretty much going straight down the speed changes and the direction changes just a little bit and I'd best sort of uh, shut up here because we have just entered into the atmosphere so what I'm gonna do <laughs> is I'm gonna actually point this a little bit towards the side and we're going to stage to get rid of that booster. And then I'm going to turn SAS right off. The natural aerodynamics of this capsule wants to orient it onto these retrograde vector relative to the surface. And that's its safest mode of descent. And you can see we're generating a little bit of heat on the way down as we plow on through the atmosphere. but it is pretty short-lived and once it's safe to do so we'll deploy the parachute you might have noticed over here towards the uh, very left this parachute icon was red for a long time that is saying it's not safe to deploy the parachute so don't <laughs> the parachute might just rip on you but it is now not red anymore so it's telling us it is safe to deploy that parachute so we're gonna hit stage and that parachute is going to deploy and begin to slow us down and at the start it only semi deploys because it would be way too much force on the parachute if it completely opened up but once our speed gets down low actually it goes by altitude but once our altitude gets down low enough it will fully deploy us and slow us down to a safe speed for splashing down into the water it should be doing that there it goes and you can see now our surface speed is coming on down to a very comfortable about five and a half meters per second. And as Valentina safely drifts down to the surface of the water, let's talk about what we learned in this episode. Number one, understand that nav ball. The nav ball is the best tool to help you control the direction in which your vessel is pointing we call that control attitude control we also talked a little bit about pitch yaw and roll as well as throttle control and the importance of throttle control when it comes to controlling the amount of g's that you put on your vessel and onto your kerbals we also talked about sas ksp's a stability assist system to help you maintain the attitude that you want and finally we talked about the fact that getting into space and staying in space are two entirely different things which nicely segues into what the next episode is going to be about how do we not only get into space 
but stay in space. But in the meantime, I hope that you found this episode useful, and I hope to see you again for the next one.